All right, the next part of the kidneys then is selective reabsorption. Do notice the spelling, it's a P, reabsorption, not a B, um, common error to make. So what we've got so far is the idea that, let's just quickly draw a bit of a nephron like this. Uh, we had our glomerulus up here, blood tuft of capillaries, um, the Bowman's capsule, and this first part, the, the proximal convoluted tubule, PCT, and we've got a loop of Henley. Um, this is the bit we're, we're looking at really, the proximal convoluted tubule, that's the bit we're interested in. So we've got some fluid that's been squeezed out, or filtrate, nice word to use. And this filtrate contains um, a lot of water, it contains salts, ions if you like, sodium, potassium ions. It contains glucose, it contains amino acids. Remember amino acids are relatively small, uh, relative molecular mass. You know, we're not talking about the big proteins here, um, small parts. And of course, urea. Now, urea is the one thing we want rid of. I'm not interested in that. All of these other things, certainly the glucose, certainly the amino acids, some of the salts and some of the water, we want to keep that, we want to get that back into the bloodstream. Do also remember, it's not always clear when you see these, these kind of diagrams, um, where the proximal convoluted tubule, let's make it a little bit bigger, uh, it's absolutely surrounded by capillaries, there's blood vessels in all the way around this. So things that um, are taken out from the, uh, the proximal convoluted tubule will end up back in the bloodstream, then will go back out the kidney, uh, in the renal vein and back around the body. So that, that's also something I think to be aware of. You don't always remember that these capillaries are there. They're not always shown on the diagrams because obviously it would look messy. Uh, like my diagram there. Okay, so how do we get all these bits back? Well, glucose, amino acid, salts. Well, we, we could have something here, perhaps diffusion going on. We could maybe have some kind of um, active transport. With water, it's a bit like um, a unit you did on transport in, in the first unit. Well, it's not water that's really moved around. What we end up doing is we end up moving things like salts around and the water will osmose, it will follow, um, it will move from the, the area of high to low water potential. So what we're interested in really is moving salts and that will be important to us in a second. Now your diagram in your book um, I don't think is brilliantly clear for this because it, it seems to miss a few things out. So I'm going to try and draw it a little bit like this. Obviously my drawings are a bit better than those. These are the, the cells in the wall of the proximal convoluted tubule. Now do be careful here. We're not talking about cell walls. We're talking about the wall of the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, this, this part here. So do be careful. Don't mention cell walls. If you're going to mention wall, it's the wall of the PCT. It might help if I draw the other side on here. Because you know, in your diagram it, it's not shown. So something like that. Okay, so this bit here is um, the lumen where our filtrate comes down. Outside of here, where I said we've got our um, capillary, so let's um, let's draw a capillary in here. Capillary, remember, it's sort of one cell thick. There we go. There's the endothelium of the capillaries. That's the other side of it. So this would be a capillary. Put a red blood cell in to show that that's uh, moving along. Okay. We also have in here a basement membrane. Let's just draw that in. There's our membrane layer. Again, I suppose it gets a bit confusing when we have um, when we use words like membrane here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we also have um, cell membranes, cell surface membranes. Do make sure you don't mix these things up. In fact, let's just put a few lines in here to show that this is some kind of protein-based membrane. Okay. Now, uh, it's probably easier if we start on this side of things. Anywhere we usually have folding in, in cells and biological systems like lungs and, and small intestine, we're looking at increasing the surface area. And the reason this is folded is to increase the surface area for proteins. So if I draw a lot of them in there, I'm just going to draw one here, or so it'll get very complicated. But do be aware that there's, there's loads of these things in here. What we've got on here is a sodium-potassium pump. And it is pumping, actively pumping out sodium. If I can fit that in. Remember, sodium is 
uh, a positive ion. It's pumping out sodium and it's pumping in. Let's use, tell you what, let's use a different colour. Pumping in potassium. Now this is very similar to uh, what you have in the neuron, where you have the sodium potassium pumps uh, in the the uh, membrane of the axon. Doing exactly the same thing here. It's an active process. So again, if you were describing it, you could talk about ATP being hydrolyzed to ADP plus phosphate, which releases energy. Remember, it doesn't make energy. This reaction will release energy, um, which can be used by this sodium potassium pump. So sodium is pumped out. Sodium will then diffuse further into our capillary. Remember, if we're pumping this out, we'll have a high concentration here. This, by the way, would be fluid. It would be you know, there's not an empty gap there. There's not space. There would be fluid in here, but it would diffuse across. And of course, it's getting carried away all the time. So we're constantly maintaining that gradient. As soon as it's gone diffused in, it's carried away, and we're back to our gradient again. So the sodium is diffusing um, through this way. Now, any sodium that's coming down here in our filtrate. Because we're creating conditions of low sodium here, we've got another concentration gradient. So sodium will tend to, um, to diffuse into here. Now here's the, I suppose, the clever bit. Because on this side, again, we've got folding. So again, we'd have lots of these. But I'm not going to draw them all in. I'm just going to draw one. What we've got here is a co-transporter protein. Now again, you might remember these, you might not, um, from uh, the first unit where you were talking about um, phloem and the companion cells, and you had this idea of, of pumping out hydrogen uh, ions, and then as they flowed back in through the membrane, they, they came through a co-transporter which took sucrose in with it. Um, the same, similar kind of idea here. What we have is uh, a protein, a co-transporter protein, and as the sodium diffuses in, it will take with it, um, depending on which version of the, the protein transporter it is, excuse me, either glucose or um, amino acids. Okay, now these two things will be taken in together. Um, this is why when, if you think back to the health and disease topic, uh, if you ever talked about diarrhea at all, uh, one of the problems with diarrhea is um, you lose huge amounts of water um, in uh, the, the feces and it, it can, can quickly become a, a major major problem a lot of children die um, through through diarrhea now in order to reabsorb enough water it's not enough just to to drink lots and lots of water because to absorb water back into the body you need um, glucose or amino acids and so what happens is uh, and, and sodium the the treatment for diarrhea, um, treatment for things like cholera, in fact, as well, is to be given not just water, but water with sodium, uh, salt, and glucose in it. And uh, it's very cheap. You know, it costs you know a matter of pence really for these little sachets, and they're called um, oral rehydration therapy sachets. Um, quite interesting if you, you want to look it up. But that's why it works. It was discovered that it was much more efficient at hydrating people to give them. Um, water with sugar and salt at the same time and, and this is why this is what's happening in, in the proximal convoluted tubule so the salts coming through because it's diffusing through why is it diffusing because we've got rid of the salt on this end or the sodium sorry the glucose is coming through and it's coming through at the same time as the sodium so we've got the transport so we're taking the glucose the amino acids back into blood which remember is what we wanted what happens about the water well the water um, takes care of itself really because we're building up high concentrations of um, solutes in here, glucose and amino acids and um, what it what may be, the water will move in via osmosis. It's going from the high water potential out here, if you like it's a dilute solution, into the more concentrated solution in here. And in fact, the water will continue to move all the way through the cell until it's in the blood and it's constantly being carried off. So the whole idea of taking the, the, uh, the water back in is to do with pumping these ions around. Take the sodium out here, the co-transporter on this side. And because of this, 
um, you take about 85% of your water back in in the proximal convoluted tubule, which is quite a high number. One last point, this code transporter protein, it's an example of facilitated diffusion. It's not active transport here. The co-transporter proteins are using facilitated diffusion. There's no extra energy um, being required from ATP. Of course, uh, on my diagram as well, I might as well just point this out. This is also happening on this side. The same kind of thing is happening because, of course, this isn't just a, a flat two-dimensional thing. It's uh, a 3D tube, if you like, so it's happening all the way around.